Good morning and welcome to the first of our safety series. And my name is John Henley and I'm chair of the Vestavia Hills Chamber of Commerce. We want to thank uh, the Vestavia Hills Police Department for their partnership with us in preventing a series. This is not what we had envisioned when we set this up earlier this year, but they have been great. And we're going to start this virtually today via, via Zoom. And the individuals that we want to thank today are Captain Brian Gillum, Sergeant Eddie Krim, Lieutenant Steve Gurley, and Lieutenant Joel Gaston. And they're going to be the ones that are going to be presenting today. Again, thank you for being here. We appreciate the partnership. And guys, this is great information. So listen up and hopefully you can take it back and use it in your businesses. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Joel Gaston. I'm a lieutenant with the Best Navy Hills Police Department. Currently, I'm assigned to the patrol division. Uh, today, I'm going to do my presentation on automatic license plate reader technology. I apologize for the acronyms that we're going to use today, but LPR is the acronym that will be used for that. I also want to, before we get started, say that we are not selling a product. Uh, this is just two particular companies that our department has researched and utilized. So we'll go through some of the comparisons, the uses, and how we use it in our our day to day um, jobs, as well as how some business owners and homeowners may be able to use the same technology. The two companies that we'll be speaking up today is uh, Vigilant Solutions and Flock Safety. Uh, a little bit of background, the majority of the crimes that we see in our area are deemed nonviolent property crimes, uh, as well as financial crimes. And what does that mean? It means that we as a community mostly deal with the following types of crimes, theft of property, unlawful breaking and entering of a vehicle, a burglary, fraud, identity theft, uh, crimes of that nature. The majority of these crimes are considered crimes of opportunity, meaning that the victim of the crime is not known or targeted. In a community, some of the crimes may be targeted or generalized in a sense, considering a particular neighborhood, subdivision, uh, or zip code. And this can be through previous criminal activity. They've been there before. They know the area. Um, financial research has also shown, as Lieutenant Gurley will uh, talk about, some of the more organized financial crime units have actually researched the 35216, the 35243, and the 35242 zip code to help establish a pattern of where they may target their criminal activity. Uh, this is just a slide showing some of the different uh, uses and, of how we prevent and deter criminal activity. The slide on the left is a, a picture from inside of our patrol vehicle. Uh, and that would actually be our vigilant solution. Uh, that's our mobile data terminal, the computer screen that you see inside the patrol car. And that is a vigilant solution uh, unit that you see there. And then the one on the right is a solar panel with a flock safety camera on it. And we'll go more into detail about these. Um, they both are similar technology. They both have similar uses, but they're, they're very different in, in certain ways as well. And we'll go into that more in detail. Uh, the mobile units, and if you ever see a good picture of the police cars, the mobile units, um, we describe the one mobile unit that we have on a patrol car, uh, or at least I describe it as a rabbit. Um, it's constantly needs to be in motion, and the units you'll see on top of the, the car, maybe you've seen them on some of the front bumpers or rear bumpers of patrol cars, they look like small uh, box units with uh, lots of different uh, glass optics in the front that pick up and read the license plate. And then the fixed unit is exactly what you think of. It's, it's affixed to a pole, uh, a traffic light, uh, you know, a pre-mounted pole for a neighborhood. And it looks like a large game camera, if you will, uh, with a solar panel and a battery pack connected to it. Uh, comparing some of the technologies, I broke it down into roaming technology as well as fixed position technology. Uh, the roaming technology, again, we we place ours on a patrol vehicle. That vehicle is constantly in motion and moving through neighborhoods, uh, parking lots, uh, different shopping centers, and it's constantly feeding information through those cameras and it's networked uh, to every other vehicle that's on the road for the Vest Navy Hills Police Department uh, as a patrol unit. So anything that the eye of that camera sees is being transmitted to every other unit that's out on, on the street. And that's why I want to refer to it as the rabbit. The rabbit needs to keep moving because the more information it takes in, the more information that it can put out to the patrol units. Uh, 
Um, the patrol unit's highly visible. The 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 uh, LPR on the mobile unit is is highly visible. It's constantly moving and constantly accepting data and putting out uh, data. And it's an extension of the patrol officer. He cannot visibly uh, recognize every tag that comes in front of him. The interesting thing about the LPR unit is there's about four on each car and they're reading traffic that's going by him. So if he's on 31 southbound, it's reading traffic going northbound past him and it's reading traffic that's following parallel with him as well as southbound. So it's taken a lot of data that the, the human eye could never see and process and register at the same time. And it's putting it through the, through the terminal and putting it out to every other officer. Um, roaming technology, because it is on a patrol car, we also are subject to call. So that rabbit, if you will, is not constantly in motion 24 seven because they have to attend a call of service. They've got to go to court. Uh, they come here to the police department to do a report. So that technology does in fact, in times come to a stop um, for different reasons. And then they're back on, on the road. And then that technology is more likely, uh, as we talked about earlier, to be on a major roadway, a shopping center, businesses, things of like that. The, we do go through neighborhoods, but the, the rabbit, if you will, is mainly trying to cover as much ground as possible to get all that information out to the different other patrol cars. Uh, talking about fixed technology, these are the ones that are on the telephone poles, the game camera uh, appearing, uh, modules that we use, they concentrate on one focused area because they are uh, pre-determined and pre-mounted somewhere. So there has to be a pretty good idea where you want to put that technology and how you want to use that. And we'll talk about how the police use it as well as how some of the citizens can use that. Uh, right now, we're experimenting on where we want to place those units. And we've got probably 12 different locations throughout Liberty Park, Cobble Heights, and, and Vestavia proper is where we're trying to move those units, uh, see what type of activity, what type of success that we get, and we'll see where we want to position those for a final destination, if you will. Um, it, a 14 foot pole with a, with a solar panel and a battery pack, as well as a camera. And generally it's, um, at the entrance or the exit of a subdivision. Uh, it's in a high traveled corridor on, on a road or it's at the entrance to a business. Uh, and again, we'll talk about how patrol, as the Vestavios Police Department patrol, as well as detectives, as well as citizens can use that. It is what, it, as well an extension of the patrol officer. That data, just like the vigilant solution, the flock safety cameras that are in fixed positions, funnel the same data back through the uh, MDTs, the terminals in the car, and alert officers of what is being seen and read and it's as well networked to the different officers in their vehicles. Uh, those are 24 seven monitored. The patrol officers don't have to do anything except log into a website to receive that information, just like vigilant solutions. Uh, but they are more likely to be in neighborhoods. That uh, was Flock's main goal was to start off in uh, neighborhoods, HOAs, uh, and monitor the traffic. The, Interesting thing about Flock in particular, and again, we're, we're not selling a product. This is just the one that we have. Um, neighborhoods can purchase those cameras, but the police have access directly through the NCIC database to get all the images and information that's being um, put through that machine. So it kind of works hand in hand on that. Uh, we'll talk about some of the features. Uh, the roaming technology receives alerts important to your agencies and officers, and you can customize that. Uh, I'll have a slide later that we'll talk about. And what I mean by customize, uh, NCIC uploads information every 24 hours at midnight. You, we as a department go in and set the parameters that we want our vigilant solutions, our roaming technology to alert us on. And that can be an amber alert. That can be a, a warrant an expired tag, it can be a stolen tag, a stolen vehicle, and we dial in exactly what we want and, and when we want it to go off. Uh, we can help conduct vehicle canvases and it snaps plates uh, via mobile devices and is immediately available for analysis. Again, those cameras are taking in uh, four different angles of vehicles moving up and down the roadway, processing that information at, I, I don't know what speed that would be, 
and putting that information out to every officer that's logged into a mobile data terminal and giving them the direct feedback. And we'll go into some of the more detailed pictures to show what the officers see in just a minute. And then we also can create and manage your own hot list of vehicles for interest. Now this would be in particular a device that the detectives could give us information that they are in search of a particular vehicle and it doesn't have to be an exact make model tag. We can go with partial tags. We can go with just colors. You can go with a combination of any of that and create a what's called a hot list. If there's somebody that they need to find, they upload the information into a hot list file that is only subject to view for our guys. And then the MDTs and the LPRs are running and help find that vehicle if we pass it. The fixed position technology receives alerts that are important to your officers and you can customize that as well. It's the same type dashboard that you can go in and customize what you want to be notified about, what you don't want to be notified about. Uh, and the interesting thing about most of the fixed position technologies like block safety is if an HOA is, is utilizing or a business, you can actually go in and create what's called a resident file and you can say, hey, these are the, the vehicles and the people that live in this neighborhood. Don't even pay attention to that vehicle. And then every other vehicle goes through. It's still capturing the images of the vehicle, uh, but it lists that as a resident as opposed to a non-resident. Um, you can create and manage a hot list file just, to, just like the Vigilant Solutions. Uh, and the interesting thing is because that's fixed position, if we get an alert or received a, a what's called a hit, uh, we're able to deploy our resources quickly to that particular area that the camera is located. Again, the fixed position technology is mainly for neighborhoods, communities, HOAs, and they're able to create a safe list that we talked about with the resident versus non-resident. Now let's talk about the technology. The automatic license plate readers or the ALPRs are high-speed computer control camera systems that are typically mounted on poles, street lights, highway overpasses, mobile trailers are attached to police squad cars. Uh, LPRs automatically capture all license plates that come into view along with location, date, and time. The data, which includes photographs of the vehicle and sometimes the driver and passengers uploaded into the central server. Uh, quickly, we have, again, we have the fixed position that we're, we're testing out to see where we want to put that. Right now, we've got one of them affixed to a traffic trailer. If anybody's ever been out in the city somewhere and seen our traffic trailer, it says your speed is, and when you pass it, it gives you the blinking sign of how fast you're going. We've actually got one of our cameras affixed to that, um, just testing out to see how it does on a trailer. Uh, I can tell you that Hoover has the vigilance system, and if anybody's ever been in the city of Hoover and sees the big signs that say slow down, move to the right, have a good day, SEC baseball this way, every one of those trailers has a vigilant solution tag reader, and that's strictly how they utilize their technology is moving around the city on trailers. But how can law enforcement use this technology? The license plate readers uh, read the plate numbers and, and the location along with the exact time and date of when the plate was encountered. And when combined, the ALPR data can be revealed the direction and speed of a person traveling to a particular camera view. In aggregate over time, the data can reveal a vehicle's historical travel, and detectives can review data from a particular area at a given time. The system can have set parameters for officers to be notified when a potential target has passed through a camera, and this can be a stolen vehicle, an outstanding warrant, or an amber alert. So the interesting way that the detectives and the patrol guys use this technology is patrols constantly moving and going to different calls for service, and these cameras are being fed the information real time. Uh, we may not know that a crime has occurred unless we get a call for service, but let's say the next day or the day after a report's made about a particular crime in a particular area. Our detectives can then take these cameras and use the parameters in the field set on the dashboard and narrow down to a date range or a particular camera view and see how many vehicles passed an area. If we have a resident or possibly a witness that saw a particular color vehicle, uh, saw a vehicle moving at a particular time of day or night, then that gives the detectives the ability to go back and narrow their fields of search for all these cameras that are that are interconnected with each other. 
I understand that there are concerns about uh, license plate technology, the privacy, the, the data storage, and the data security. Uh, the privacy, the only way to link personally identifiable information like name and address or face is anonymous data that records uh, is to obtain access to a State Department of motor vehicle. That access is currently restricted by federal law uh, via the Driver's Privacy Protection Act and comes with penalties and fines. Basically, the courts have deemed that if you're moving on a vehicle you're, uh, or on a roadway, your vehicle, the license plate, and the outside of that vehicle is, is not um, subject to privacy. It, it's, it's plain view, uh, and those LPRs can capture that data. Uh, how is it stored? Different companies store it different way. It's a, it's a combination of cloud servers versus uh, servers on site. Most of them keep their data for up to five years before it rolls off unless you, you extract that for a particular case. Uh, and as far as security, again, the NCIC is the information that we're receiving and that is protected federally and that information is uploaded every 24 hours. Um, a dashboard view um, is just a simple view. I'm not sure if this is on your slide or not, Ms. Odell, but it's just a simple map to, to kind of show um, the map and all those dots on the map in Jefferson County are, is a flock camera system. That's the flock dashboard. And it's a very user-friendly dashboard. Uh, it just shows the different cameras. And just because we have three flock cameras in the city of Vestavia Hills, uh, and we have a vehicle that passes through one of our cameras, it may not just be subject to the use of the Vestavia Hills Police Department. We receive phone calls all the time asking if we can check a flock system or a vigilant system uh, for a particular agency to see if this type of vehicle passed through any of our cameras uh, and the detectives and the, the users of this dashboard have the ability to narrow or, or broaden the scope of their search. They can look at any camera uh, at any date range for any type of vehicle, any type of person, any type of bicycle. So just because your crime uh, was committed by somebody on foot doesn't mean that the camera did not capture it. And it's very interesting how, how narrow the field or how broad of a field that you can search. You can search, like I said, colors, trucks, pickups, partial license plates, anything uh, within a date range, and it'll show you uh, that. Now, one slide I think that you do have is an example of a picture of a vehicle that went through a flock camera. Uh, and it shows the make and the model as well as the tag, the, the camera, Reading shows it, the Sylvester Hills Police Department uh, camera, and it has the latitude and longitude. And then some of the features that you can uh, drill a little deeper into that image uh, on the computer is the slide to the right. And it has a heat map, and it shows where that vehicle travels the most in the, in the Jefferson County area. It shows the court order that travels. It shows the times that it travels and it shows what cameras it goes through. So you can virtually track a vehicle from our city, outside of our city, based off of LPR technology if it's going through cameras. Again, Vestavia Hills Police Department has vigilant solutions, uh, LPR in their, in their patrol cars, and we have flock cameras in fixed positions, but that doesn't mean that we can't broaden our search outside the city of Vestavia utilizing the same technology that other agencies have. I've never seen a use I'm not sure if you have that's gone outside the state yet, but I believe that there is that capability. I just don't know that we we have the means to do that at this time. Uh, but the dashboard and the and the utilities with inside that one picture is amazing. What a detective can drill into and in the and the type of information that they can extract. Uh, I want to go back and talk about the hot list a little bit more. There's a picture. Um, again, it, the hot list is just tells us. When the MDT comes up, it's a picture of the vehicle, the entire vehicle. There's a close-up of the tag, and then we actually get a latitude-longitude snapshot on Google Maps that shows us exactly where that car is and the direction that it was running when the, when the picture was taken. It's a very interesting uh, and very quick. Most of these uh, hits, if you will, are received in under 40 seconds. That seems to be the benchmark of technology for these license plate readers is any information is conveyed back to um, the officers in under 40 seconds. And that's extremely high. Most of our hits are coming in 15 to 20 seconds. 
Now, how do we use this technology? The Vest Davy Hills Police Department utilizes the LPR technology in a wide range of applications from patrol activity on the street to detectives that investigate crime in a particular area or neighborhood to officers giving crime prevention talks. LPR technology has become a common tool for the law enforcement community in the 21st century. We can't physically be in every area of our city every second of the day, but these tools allow us to have eyes in multiple locations with instant and live feedback to officers in order to assist, deter, and identify potential crimes. Again, a lot of the crimes uh, that we spoke about, the nonviolent property crimes, the breaking and entering of a vehicle, the burglary, uh, are crimes of opportunity. Uh, most burglars choose not to be caught, therefore they don't uh, break into a house that's occupied. They, their intent is not to, con to have any type of confrontation. And same with somebody breaking in into your car or stealing mail out of your mailbox. They don't want anyone to see them. So we take a report for that crime and the detective gets handed a case and he has no suspect activity. He has no suspect uh, leads to go on. He has no witness statements to go on. This technology can help go back and refine a particular street, community, time, date range, and then try to put similar vehicles in different areas and try to refine his search of potential suspects. As well as going back to the HOAs, I think it's a great crime prevention tool for um, HOAs and subdivisions to look at. Um, typically the cost of these fixed position units are around $2,000 a year. Um, that includes 24 seven service, support, installation of the equipment. Uh, we have not lost and or damaged any of our units, but if we do lose or damage any of our units, they'll be replaced for free. Now, if a residential subdivision was to look at that, that's a pretty fair price spread out over however many residents you have in, in your subdivision uh, for each year of service. And again, that tool is able, we're able to see that, we're able to use that as well as the residents. Um, so in conclusion, the police department is committed to providing the very best service and protection that we can to our community. And technology has certainly become a priority resource in helping serve our citizens. We believe that crime prevention techniques as well as investigative tools to help solve crimes are in everyone's best interest. We hope to continue to see the benefits that this new crime fighting tool will provide and have shown completely different styles and uses of the LPR technology. I hope that you see how they can assist not only law enforcement, but our citizens. And then I've put up a link of the two um, resources that we use. Again, Vigilant Solutions and Flock Safety. I will say that Vigilant Solutions is not uh, available to the public. That is a government only, law enforcement only. That is our roaming technology. They also um, deal with facial recognition. It's just not available to the public yet, but the Flock Safety uh, again, we're not selling one product, but this is this is the product that we choose to use. And that concludes my presentation. Lieutenant Gaston, um, I do have one quick follow-up question. You gave the amount of uh, the cost of the unit, approximately two thousand, and uh, is that an annual cost? And is there any monthly in addition to that? It's just that annual cost. Thank you. And if y'all have questions, if you want to um, unmute and, and we at the end we'll have, are you going to be able to stay? Okay. Um, we're going to go on to Lieutenant uh, Gurley, but if you have questions, we will ask the, uh, have a, a Q&A at the end. So, Lieutenant Gurley. Okay. Good morning. Thanks for having us. I'm um, Lieutenant Steve Gurley. I'm currently an administrative lieutenant, but my background comes in investigations. Uh, give a little bit of an overview about the police department. Uh, in the investigative division, we have a full complement of detectives, starting with a captain, uh, investigative lieutenant, and, and sergeants, and, and corporal. They investigate all types of crime. But also, in addition to that, uh, we have folks that are assigned with our federal partners as task force officers. I'm actually uh, assigned as a task force officer 
for the criminal division of the Internal Revenue Service. Uh, we have Sergeant uh, Robert Owens, who is a task force officer and assigned and credentialed with the FBI. Also, um, Sergeant Chad Cobb is currently assigned with the United States Secret Service as a task force officer. Now, you may ask why. Um, a lot of times, the, the, the crimes like uh, Lieutenant Gaston mentioned, uh, we are a target area for fraud and criminal activity. If we find that this criminal activity stretches across state lines, uh, which it often does, we work really closely with our federal partners and the U.S. Attorney's Office, and we can investigate these crimes nationally uh, as well as uh, regionally and, and statewide. Uh, so today I'm here to give an overview of uh, business fraud and business theft. Uh, of course, this is a very broad subject, and I'm going to offer some tips and give some actual case scenarios of things that have happened right here in Vestavia Hills that we have uh, investigated, prosecuted at the state and the federal level. So research shows that an, an organization loses 5% of its annual revenue through fraud and theft. Every organization should have a plan in place preventing fraud and it's much easier to prevent the fraud than recovering your losses after that fraud has been committed. Fraud comes in very many forms. It can be asset misappropriation, corruption, financial statement fraud, but asset misappropriation, while being the least costly, makes up 90% of all the fraud cases that have been studied. These are schemes which an employee steals or exploits an organization's resources. For example, asset misappropriation could be stealing cash before it's been counted or entered into a recording uh, mechanism. False expense, uh, reimbursement claims or taking non-cash assets of an organization. And the most of the uh, business fraud cases they've found uh, through studies that the fraud was going on for over 18 months before it was discovered. Some tips in this is to uh, know your employees. Um, if, an, if an employee lacks uh, appreciation or, or feels uh, that there, there's some anger at their boss or uh, there's negative attitudes within their organization, sometimes that can lead that person to uh, commit theft as, a, as a, a way of revenge. And to give you a, a case study scenario of a case that actually happened right here that we investigated, uh, there was a lady that, excellent employee, 25 years of service, uh, worked for an insurance uh, company. Um, her boss called her in and said she, uh, she wasn't working up to his expectations and she was not going to receive her yearly $3,000 bonus. Over the next two years, she embezzled over $275,000 uh, in an attempt to recover that money. We were able to recover about 10,000. So know your employees, um, Watch their, uh, watch their actions, one of which is um, this kind of employee will rarely take off, they'll ra rarely take a vacation, they'll rarely allow anyone else to have access to uh, the files or things that they're involved in, uh, and that's because they don't want someone to uh, uncover uh, the uh, embezzlement or the, or the fraud that they're uh, committing. Um, sometimes employees are really hesitant to, to uh, report uh, incidents within their, their, um, their business. Uh, setting up an anonymous tip uh, email or, or something like that within the business so that if someone sees something that's inappropriate, they could uh, respond or, or anonymously send a tip to the uh, management can cut down on some of the uh, internal thefts. And for another example uh, in a retail store setting, if there's uh, a cash register, you have the person operating the cash register do the cash receipts, then you have another person check those receipts, and then another person tally those, 
and then another person make that deposit. That way you have a chain of custody of, of your assets and someone could notice an, anom an anomaly within that and report that and stop that. And of course, sometimes there are just clerical or uh, uh, addition mistakes that, um, that could be uncovered. Another suggestion would be to number all your checks, invoices, and purchase orders consecutively. Monitor uh, their use uh, on checks. Only use uh, deposit only. Never ever use a signature stamp and require two signatures on, on checks. Uh, this is another uh, way to prevent fraud. Um, another local scenario story of, uh, of an incident that occurred, we had a um, salesperson from a retail store that created fictitious accounts and was in charge of uh, uh, receivables. Uh, as they would take receivables in, they would take the money uh, electronically and, and divert it over into other bank accounts, unknowing to the, uh, to the owner of the company. Uh, by the time that was uncovered, there was over half a million dollars that was stolen and, and not recovered. Uh, we also had a food service company uh, that did catering. And, well, they still do catering, but, but the person that was in charge of catering uh, for convenience of the customer set up a Venmo account. And as the, uh, as the people would pay for the catering, they would pay to the a Venmo account that this person had their bank account set up to to receive those funds. Uh, that uh, netted a total loss of $250,000. So you see how easily, and, and, and those two cases uh, stretched over a year to two years. So you, you can see how easily uh, persons with an intent to, to defraud can, can really wreck a business. Uh, it's, and some of this is unsurvivable. Uh, when they have these kind of losses. So uh, again, back to the uh, retail side of it, at the cash register, let's talk a little bit about, about credit card fraud. Um, when someone presents a credit card at a, at a cash register, of course, here locally in West Davie Hills, we have our, um, we have small mom and pop type shops and, and they typically recognize the regular customers. It's that customer that you don't recognize that, that uh, enters the store, uh, may buy something with a credit card and it's declined, and then they suddenly have a credit card that, that works. And they purchase something uh, for a nominal price, $10, $15, uh, and then they decide to go shopping some more. That's a huge red flag. Uh, they're, they're probably using a uh, fraudulent or cloned credit card. and uh, they're going back now that they know that it works and they're going to uh, take advantage of you. A lot of times the banks will cover that kind of fraud activity, but this is, these are the th kind of things that, that, uh, that we experience regularly here in Vestavia Hills. Uh, again, because we're such a, a target rich community of, uh, of, of pleasant folks that, that, that treat people like they want to be treated and, and they're just, uh, they're, they're really taken aback when somebody takes advantage of them and commits fraud. As far as counterfeiting, we're seeing a lot of counterfeiting these days uh, because of the technology and printers and printer paper that you can obtain. Um, some things to look out for, of course, you know, the, the fraud pen that you use. Uh, so a lot, of, a lot of businesses will only use the fraud pen on 100s or $50 bills. So the suspects that, that deal in counterfeiting now, they know that, so they start counterfeiting in 20s and 10s. Um, that's something to, to look out for as well. And also, uh, one trick that they use is to use a brand new bank envelope. So have the, uh, the counterfeit bills in that bank envelope so it appears to you like they just came from the bank as they peel out these, uh, these brand new crisp bills and just a quick look at the serial numbers uh, will usually detect that they're counterfeit because unfortunately they're too lazy to get uh, newer bills and, and, and change those, those, uh, those serial numbers that they're copying. 
Another thing too is to have, have all your employees trained if you have uh, video surveillance within the business. Uh, have everyone trained that can uh, capture an image of someone that committed a fraud or a shoplifting or a theft and can provide that to the police department uh, rather quickly. Uh, a lot of times we run into a problem of uh, a group that comes through the city using fraudulent credit cards and they go to multiple locations and we're hot on their trail, but when we get to the uh, audio uh, video surveillance system, no one knows how to work it or, or we, can't get, uh, we can't get the information downloaded quick enough to get out to our patrol guys to, uh, uh, to try to apprehend them. Uh, another case that, that and, and, and I bring this up because there are a lot of attorneys that, uh, that are here in Best Davy. You may not practice in, in the uh, city limits, but you have a, a law firm. Uh, be very aware of uh, email compromises where you're uh, handling um, closing on, on properties. Uh, we're getting attacked constantly from uh, outside our national borders by, uh, by folks that, uh, that uh, they tap their cells into your email systems and then take over an email. Uh, they create fictitious emails that look, uh, uh, and they call it a, a skin. It looks like your website, it looks like your uh, web page, and they create a, 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 a digital print of, of your skin of your website, but then they change just subtle things in the website uh, and take over your um, take over your business, and uh, especially during the time of a real estate closing, uh, we've had several cases here in Vestavia Hills that that we were uh, we were able to um, help with, uh, where the victim brought their earnest money or their down payment or whatever was required at closing and they had uh, electronically transmitted that money. Uh, the, uh, the receipts for that were compromised and the money was taken and transferred to another bank out of state uh, almost immediately. Um, those are cases where our, working with our federal partners, we can reach out through the U.S. Attorney's Office and we can capture that money um, and and seize it from from wherever it it was um, deposited, as long as we're there and can, and we can get it within 24 to 48 hours. So back to our department. Uh, for a lack of better terms, we're a one-stop shop. If you have any any email compromises, any internal fraud, um, any uh, large amounts of theft. Uh, no matter how uh, small or large, we have the capability of investigating every case that you could ever imagine that could happen in, in our city. Um, and we welcome you to come and get the process started right here with us. Uh, we're, we're different than most other cities uh, within the Jefferson County area because we have all those uh, resources and, and access to uh, uh, complex investigations that are, are, are not typical in other areas. Uh, I want to mention one thing that Lieutenant Gaston was, was speaking about, um, how, how investigations and the vigilant or the flock system uh, cross over. Um, if, you, if you all go back on our Facebook page, uh, the Vest David Hills Police Department Facebook page over the past couple of years, you'll see where we made multiple arrests of Cuban nationals, South American nationals, um, uh, Romanian uh, nationals that came into uh, the United States illegally, but only to commit fraud here. And with a quick Google search of demographics and median income, uh, you can pinpoint areas throughout the entire country of where would be the best place to go to commit fraud. Uh, these folks, especially the uh, uh, Cuban nationals, came in through Miami and were uh, the ones that you would hear about that would go out and put out skimmers on gas pumps 
and those kind of things. And then you go use your card and, and then your card is compromised. How we were able to track those folks and capture them right here was by the use of this kind of technology where we were able to uh, put together a, a pattern of, of where they were starting from and where they were going. All it took was a couple of uh, uh, good surveillance videos catching them in areas, let's just uh, like Fort Lauderdale, we have a tag and we have a, a, a picture of, a, of the vehicle and we were able to track them across the Southeast and ultimately capture them. Uh, by, by having that technology, uh, we can have uh, quick resources to get us uh, uh, to build the pattern in the MO and build probable cause uh, for making these kind of uh, traffic stops on these on these folks when they come uh, to attack us uh, and our and our financial uh, network. Some of the cases that that we have worked. And I'm, I'm using Regions Bank's terms, not mine. Uh, through, through using this kind of technology, through our federal partners, our task forces, and our, uh, our drive toward uh, solving these financial crimes, we were able to uh, prevent close to one billion, that's with a B, billion dollars worth of credit card fraud in the, over the past two years. So it's, it's, it's paramount that we, that we continue this fight uh, of the unseen uh, criminals that are there, that are that are there to attack and 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 get our our financial um, uh, commit these financial crimes. Um, so the trends that uh, you know, Chief Chief Rary noticed these trends back several years ago. Where in our area, we've moved away from violent crime, uh, the, the robberies, the, the strong arm robberies, and those kind of things. And, and the reason for that is uh, for the criminal, there's very little uh, to gain by that when they could compromise a credit card and, and steal 10 times what they could get in a strong arm robbery of a, a convenience store. Not to mention uh, the uh, prosecution for those kind of cases, if there's violence involved, there's all kind of enhancements for the prosecution for more jail time. In a fraud case, credit card fraud or email compromise, it's very, very difficult to prosecute once you or catch them. And then once you prosecute them, it's nonviolent. Uh, so sometimes these offenders are, uh, continue their, uh, their criminal activity. Uh, so uh, stay vigilant, and again, if there's anything that we can do at the Vest Davy Hills Police Department to answer your questions, investigate any type of crime that you uh, come across, we're there and uh, ready and willing to help. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, both Lieutenant uh, Gurley and Lieutenant Gaston. We appreciate y'all coming and sharing with us today. It's great information. I wish we had every retailer in our community online with us. We have recorded this and we will put it out online when we get the uh, link back. But in the meantime, I wanted to ask if anybody had any questions, if you uh, do, you're welcome to unmute and ask them now. The gentleman will stay here and answer questions for a little bit and um, would like to hear what questions you may have. So you can go ahead and unmute and we will answer those questions. In the meantime, I want to go back, uh, Lieutenant Gaston, they didn't hear your answer earlier about the cost on the flock system and if there was an annual fee, I mean a monthly fee. Can you address that again and hold the mic close so they can hear? My knowledge, there's no monthly fee. It's a it's an annual fee of around $2,000. Like I said, that includes the insulation, the uh, solar panel, the camera, the battery backup. Uh, if it's damaged or destroyed, uh, it's a complete renewal of the system uh, and again that gives us access to different things but two thousand dollars roughly I, I don't know the cost for each camera but that's what we were told around two thousand dollars each per year covers everything 
All right. Good, good information. And again, if you are in an area that's like a shopping center type area, it would be something maybe you would look at as a group to install. And I also know y'all have gotten some homeowners that are interested in doing that. So again, in your home, your personal area, you may also talk to um, your HOA if you have one or the community and, and talk about doing that. I know that the city of Mount Brook, um, and again, we're, we're not salesmen. They have chosen to go with uh, ring technology. Um, we did a little research and decided that that wasn't the avenue for us, but it does offer uh, something similar, but it's all based off of your doorbell cameras. Uh, I'm not sure the particulars or the ins and outs with cost and privacy. I know it was a big issue with ring, um, but this is the company that, that we've chosen. Thank you very much. And if you have questions, like I said, I haven't seen anybody raise their hand or unmute to ask anything, but I'm sure any of these gentlemen would be more than happy to talk to you if you needed any further guidance on fraud issues. If you have any, I encourage you. We are so blessed in this community to have an incredible police department. They serve us very well and are always ready and willing to answer questions, uh, assist with anything that you may need. So I encourage you to reach out to them. And I, I guess the main number is 978-0100 and they will transfer you to the police department and you can um, ask any questions. So if uh, I guess y'all have covered everything so nobody has any Q&A here. So with that, uh, I guess we'll sign off. And again, thank you all for being here and thanks to um, Captain Gillum. He had to step out, but I appreciate him working with me and um, Captain Johnny Evans before he uh, changed roles and he helped set this up and um, we will continue this. We will have another one in June. So be looking for information on that. And I'm grateful to you guys for working with us. So thank you all. And we'll